Good evening. Uh, this is Kurt Jetta. I'm president and founder of Jetta Investment Company of Delray Beach. We uh, invest in affordable multifamily housing in Southern Palm Beach County. We have units in Delray Beach as well as Lake Worth Beach. Tonight I uh, am going to talk to you about MTHUs or multi-tenant housing units. So this is an idea that will be presented at the Delray Beach City Commission on Thursday at 4 p.m. to a workshop. So basically what a workshop is, is you present your case, you have a change in, say, zoning ordinances, and the commission determines whether this will go to the city for further vetting. So it's not a final approval by a long shot. But the reason I'm having this, and I know it was kind of late notice as we um, put the word out, so I imagine most of you will look at this as a recording and you won't have a chance to ask your questions. But the reason why I'm doing this is there's a lot of information being posted about this concept on chat boards, a lot of misinformation, uh, a lot of confusion, a lot of concerns. And I just wanted for the record, I can't possibly answer every single one of them. So I just wanted for the record to record this. Uh, and if there are enough people to ask questions, uh, you know, after I'm finished kind of explaining what an MTHU is, then we can have that discussion. So an MTHU stands for multi-tenant housing units. So think about the old school single room occupancy or rooming house or boarding house. So that's kind of the model. It's been around for centuries. But what this is, is it's an innovation, not in the housing concept, but it is in the standards of vetting tenants, the standards of building, design, and then also the regulations to enforce all those standards. So the as proposed, what this MTHU would have is four rooms would share a private bathroom, eight units would share a kitchen. Uh, there would be community space, there'd be you know, distance requirements, density uh, restrictions. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of the fundamental concept. Again, the innovation is really in how it's managed and regulated. So it doesn't become the public nuisance that people typically associate with this form of housing. There's a lot of grim stats about why this type of housing is needed. So most, in fact, almost all of the housing, when people talk about affordable housing, is really geared for middle income folks, people making at least 50,000. And if you look at the county bond issue, they really, they were talking about a target more like 70 to 120,000. And they were talking about more home ownership. But what about those people that make only 50% or less of the county median income. So as of 2021, that median income was $70,000 across families and non-family households. So half of that is $35,000. So that's kind of the benchmark of what we're trying to target with these MTHUs. We're trying to provide a form of affordable housing to people making less than $35,000 a year. So what can people making, let's let's take it so the math is easy. If, if I'm making $36,000, that's 3,000 a month. If I spend 40% of my income on rent, I can afford $1,200 a month. Um, the fair rent in Delray Beach for a studio apartment right now, according to the Housing and Urban Development Commission, uh, Department, federal, is $1,800. So that's a shortfall of $600 a month. And that's even assuming 40% of someone's uh, income goes to rent. And the HUD de determines rent burden is more like 30. So 40 is kind of being forgetting. So if you're even lower, let's say 24,000 a year, you're making $2,000 a month, 40%. That's $800 a month. You're $1,000 a month short from being able to afford a studio apartment. And this isn't a little segment of the population. This is a lot of people affected. For example, in Delray Beach, 16% of all households make $25,000 or less. 24% 
of non-family households or individuals make less than $25,000 a year. And then there's also quite a few people making $15,000 or less, seniors on a fixed income. Uh, they didn't save, and that's all they have is Social Security. They're making $15,000, maybe even less. What can you afford there? Well, that number is more like $500 a month. So the MTHUs being proposed are about $600 a month. So even at $15,000, that's still kind of a stretch. But it is affordable because typically you don't own a car uh, and other things. So, you know, a lot of grim statistics out there. If you're making $35,000 a year in Palm Beach County, or I'm sorry, in Delray Beach, and you're renting, five out of six of you are paying more than half of your income to rent. If you're making more than $35,000 and you're renting, only 9% of you are paying more than half. So that's an incredible rent burden right now, more than 50. That number blew me away when I went into the stats. Um, and so, I mean, there's kind of, I, a statistical analyst by trade. So I approach these things with an analytical mindset, but I mean, there's quite a big human cost. So why should we care? I mean, there's the humanitarian uh, aspect, a lot of homelessness and, you know, letting people not so such a burden, but I'll give you four good reasons. One is we reduce homelessness. So in the MTHUs we own in Delray Beach, we have 10 units in uh, one building, three are, um, regular apartments, seven are MTHUs. Five of the 10 were former homeless before they moved in. So clearly, and they are now paying out of their own monthly income they get from the government that they're paying for rent. Um, if you, so that's one. Two, so reduce homelessness. Two is the building is very close to downtown Atlantic Ave. And so if we can build more housing for low-income individuals, that's a pool of low-wage workers that, we can, that can support local businesses. They can earn money and support themselves. Third is to stabilize communities um, because this is a permanent housing solution. It's not transient. Uh, we want people there for a while. And in this building, there's uh, three people in particular that have a combined 14 years of living there. Um, and then the fourth reason is that we want to, um, hmm, what is that? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's a big one actually. So we free up income. So instead of people paying more than 50% of rent, uh, of their income on rent, they can use their money for other things. They can go to the Ave and spend money. They can go to the nail salon. There's a lot of things they can do besides giving money to us landlords. So that's kind of um, you know the rationale why this housing is needed. And what I find, and th th I'll just give you the kind of lay of the stats before I address some of the concerns. So we did some research on MTHUs. First of all, people, we did it in Delray and um, Lake Worth Beach. We went to active voters, so people that have voted at least once in the last four years and said they will probably or definitely vote in the next municipal election. So 315 people in Delray Beach, 80% of them thought it was important to increase the supply of affordable housing for low-income individuals. So then we split that sample in half. We said one half, we're going to just give you a little bit of information on MTHUs. It's $600 a month, just like a rooming house. That's all we told them. The other sample, half of it, we said just $600 a month, just like a rooming house, extra security and vetting. It's legal in Toronto, a city of 6.2 million people. No government subsidies are required. Um, and a couple of other items. So there's limited information, full information. The limited information sample didn't like the idea. They didn't like the concept. 42% approved. 49% were against. The full information sample though, their approval shot way up. It went to 70% approved, only 23% against. And the people that were strongly against, I mean the people that give uh, elected officials nightmare, went from 32 down to 16. So that was cut in half. So there's gonna be basic, that, what that told me is, 
a lot of understandable concerns about rooming houses. And if we don't take the time to educate the public about what we're trying to do, it's not going to be popular. It shouldn't pass. So that's what I'm doing right now is spending time, investing time, money and expense to educate the public on what this entails. Because we know that when you get full information, people in both towns, both Delray and Lake Worth Beach, overwhelmingly supported. In, in Delray, it was three to one. So the big concerns that we hear about uh, MTHUs, first of all, you're going to bring in their tenements, you're going to be in a bad element, crime, drug, all the rest, all the baggage associated. I mean, the, as I mentioned earlier, the whole idea with these types of uh, this, um, this proposal is the infrastructure of standards and regulations to prevent that kind of public nuisance. And we have a track record in that building at 105 Northwest 5th. It's been there since 1960 as a rooming house. Since 2018, it's been managed by Delray Housing Group. And there ha because they've instituted some rigorous vetting of tenants, there hasn't been any crime there, no nuisance, uh, strong support from the, the local community to expand on that concept because they have family, friends, they know people that could benefit from more of that type of housing. So the whole tenements issue. Second is the concern about there's a lot of shared bathrooms, kind of people that are kind of grow up in a kind of a comfortable lifestyle. Can't imagine once you're in adulthood having to share a bathroom and kitchen with strangers. I mean, I know, you know, there's college dorms, you certainly do it, roommates after they graduate from college. You know, plenty of precedent, but there's also a concern on sanitation, who's going to keep it clean. So there's a requirement of a property management representative living on site. It'll be clean three times a, a, a week, more if needed. And there's annual inspections to make sure that sanitary standards are met. Second is security. So there'll be the latest advanced technology on you know, pads and access. So if you don't belong in that bathroom or any room, if you don't have the code, you can't get in. So there's a lot of that. We're also looking at um, the, the whole privacy issue, a men's side versus a women's side, uh, or even men only buildings and women only buildings to you know kind of, uh, alleviate any concerns about safety and privacy. So that's kind of the shared bathroom issue. Um, next is, and this is I think probably what I find is the most legitimate concern is concerns that they don't want another sober home experience. That's been a bad experience for Delray Beach, probably to a lesser extent some other communities, but Delray's had a lot of issues. Well, there's a lot of reasons why this, that's not even an apples to apples comparison. Sober home by construction is meant to be transient housing. There are no more than six months of people to either. The minimum lease that people can sign for MTHUs is six months. It is meant to be a permanent housing solution or for as long as people can build themselves up to get better types of housing. So that's one. It's not transient housing. That's permanent housing. That's the first difference. The second difference is sober homes had inherently a problematic constituency. They were addicts. Uh, many of them got well, many of them didn't. Uh, they also tend to be a much younger cohort. Uh, so there's this whole maturity issue as well. Um, here, the only, there's only problem is these people don't make a lot of money. I mean, they're not criminals because they get vetted. No, no you know, you have, can't have a criminal record. Uh, they tend to be older. Um, many of them work. Half of them don't. They're on fixed incomes. Uh, so they're a more mature cohort. So their only crime is that they don't make a lot of money. So again, so it's not a problematic population that we're kind of pulling from. And then third is sober homes were permitted in single family districts, single family zones. Our proposal would strictly prohibit MTHUs from being in single family homes, uh, zones. Um, because that's where the biggest friction from my understanding of, of those types of homes. Um, so those are three good reasons kind of it's that it's not apples to apples. And then fourth, I guess here's four 
is the whole vetting process. There's really not any vetting for sober homes other than, hey, can you write a check to move in? Uh, and did you just get out of a rehab facility here? You know, in MTHUs, the proposal is the housing and urban development standard, criminal background check, credit check, although it's not so much a credit check as an employment check or some source of income. Um, and then just kind of a general, um, you know, tenancy kind of prior uh, inspection of, you know, prior landlords, were there any issues and references? <coughs> so that's that concern. So bathrooms, uh, tenements, bathrooms, sober homes, and the final one is the bad actor. So yeah, okay, Kurt, maybe you run, or Delray Housing, it's really more Delray Housing than me running a good operation. Um, you know, I try to uphold the standards, I do uphold the standards, uh, but it's really that whole vetting that did it. But, you know, what bad landlords, bad actors, people don't, don't care. So there's a couple issues. One is, I go back to the whole regulatory regime, you have to have a, a yearly license for conditional use. If you don't meet it, you're out. Property managers are vetted um, and licensed. Owners are vetted and licensed. Tenants are vetted and licensed. That's a lot of vetting. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of one of the big areas. And then also there's a market incentive why you wouldn't have bad actors, you know, being a predominant, uh, type of landlord is because this is a profitable model. Remember, I said we don't need government subsidies or tax breaks. No burden on the taxpayer at all, and we can still solve all of these problems. But um, the only way that you make money is by proving yourself, proving you run a good operation, and then getting those approvals for other municipalities to do the same thing. It isn't one like, hey, I can start building them all over the place. You know, it's a very slow process to get uh, communities comfortable that this can work. And the only way you get them comfortable is to run a solid operation. And you know, when you run a solid operation, there's the profit incentive right there. The profit incentive is not to cut corners and run a shabby operation. So those were the main concerns. I mean, there's, I, I, you know, one thing I always say, I have a list the size of my arm, and I'm a big guy. I've got a big wingspan of legitimate concerns, and I can't possibly address all of them in 10 minutes or probably even a half hour. But I do want to hear some of the additional concerns or if you want to probe a little bit more. So I'm going to kind of look at some of the comments. Um Okay, so there, where exactly will these be in Delray? Does the neighborhood even want them? So that's two questions. You exceeded your capacity, your, your quota. So, so the proposal is for an area that encompasses less than 2% of the land mass, less than 3% of the people. It's called the Western Atlantic Subdistrict. It's where the current building that I referred to is located, Northwest Fifth Avenue. So it's kind of in the West Atlantic District. Um, it runs east to west, kind of along Atlantic, about three blocks in e each way, just so you can conceptualize it, maybe from Swinton to I-95, kind of. Um, the, and then there's distance requirements, so no more than probably, I think we calculated, maybe four buildings could go in, because we'd need 750 feet between buildings. Uh, does the community support them? Well, our survey results showed that 84% were in approval of this concept as compared to 70% of the overall population. Um, and also, we got a ton of community supporters and really community leaders coming to the uh, workshop in January. Not a workshop, it was public comments. All spoke in favor of this concept. Now, they're not signing off on the finished product. They haven't seen the details and they've made that very clear, but they like what they've seen so far and they want this process to move forward. I think I've counted 10 steps in the process before this thing actually would, you'd get a shovel in the ground to do anything. Because you have to change the ordinance, that's about five steps, and then you actually have to apply for a specific project and there's another five steps there. So. Quite, I mean, we're talking 20, late 2025, if all goes smoothly. So it's a while. 
So any other questions there? And um, let's see who else is there. Okay, I know we don't have a whole lot of viewers now. So what I'm going to do, um, hold on, there's another. In the last city commission meeting, Mayor Shelley Petrolia mentioned that the set isn't able to fully understand MTH use. I don't think she referred to the set, but she did say the community members. What do you have to say about that? Well, um, I thought it was condescending. Uh, I thought it didn't appreciate how much work and effort has gone into outreach to the community. I personally have been to four of the elders breakfast, kept them in the loop. Um, the progress of this whole project and we've been doing it since mid 2022. So we've been at it a year and a half. We had an open house in June, 2023. They got to see the premises. We laid out the plan, laid out kind of very much the information that I'm talking about. In fact, there's no gap in the information. So um, they were strongly in support of, they are fully aware of what they're uh, coming out to support. And I, as I mentioned earlier, they have made very clear that they're not signing off or supporting a final proposal because they haven't seen a final proposal. The city staff hasn't made a recommendation, but they do very much like the idea and this framework that I've just laid out on you know, the past 20 minutes. So what I will do now is uh, people, because I think you know the most of the viewership is going to be kind of seeing this, the video. Uh, my email is Kurt Jetta, K U R T J E T T A, at Jetta, J E T T A, Investment Co., all one word, dot com. Kurt Jetta at Jetta Investment Co. Dot com. Um, you can also go onto our website and learn more about this concept and go onto the FAQ page and look at the, you know, I think there's probably 20 different objections that we respond to and concerns. That is South. Florida mthu.com south florida mthu.com we'll put all these in the comments section uh when we post this but uh that's where you can get more information uh and if you like this type of content we'd appreciate a follow for jetta investment company our facebook page we're on instagram as well we're on twitter um so all of those social media platforms um, so if there are no other questions, no other concerns, uh, I'm going to shut this down and I thank everybody for uh, showing up. Take care.